Hey, what's up, YouTube? Frankenberry123 coming at you with a deck profile. Um, GK, as I told you, I'd do it in the last video. Um, you know, just been kind of getting ready for regionals. I have a regionals in Tallahassee August the 24th, which I'm really not too happy about, but, uh, obviously I'm going to try to make some, I need to try to make some meta calls. I feel like, you know, Mermails, they get wrecked by dragons, and, you know, Maxi and Valor are just such a dominant card this format. It, uh, It'll really mess them up, and you know, black wings are just kind of bad right now. So, so um, started off. Um, you have triple spy. Uh, spy. Obviously, the flip mechanics really slow right now. So I mean, it's it's pretty good though if you can keep it on the field. Obviously, you can get board presence, get recruiter, get uh, descendant. You know, whatever you need, and then. You have triple kind of, uh, commandant. It's obviously you have to have three because uh, Necker Valley is a really good card this format. So this is where it gets interesting. Uh, two recruiters and a descendant. Uh, for the longest time, I was just playing. Uh, I was playing three rec uh, three recruiter, and one descendant. But it's just like the more. And more I got to looking at Japanese builds and the build that, um, top 16 nationals. Um, you know, just the first time you see it, you, you're kind of surprised. But it's just, it works really, really well. You always draw them when you need them. Descendant right now isn't a very good card. It's not like back in the day whenever you used to be able to descendant and control the game by popping cards. Because the game was a lot slower back then. Now, um, Descendant, you just need to use it to get rid of problem cards so you can clear off a board and then, you know, poke with like 17s and 2000s, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's. And then you play. One Assailant. Uh, Assailant's kind of. It's okay right now. I don't know. Um, I haven't really played a whole bunch of Evil Swarms with the deck, but. I usually side it out against Prophecy. But this deck has a really good prophecy matchup anyway. Uh, now I play double Malefic Stardust and double Cyber End. I feel like all of these are necessary. Like I wish I could draw at least one of these opening hand because people don't know what to do against uh, Cyber End. They kind of flail angrily at Cyber End because it's a 4K beater. If you can get in about three attacks with Cyber End, obviously you can win the game like that. And then. Um, Love Stardust obviously keeps your field spell. Obviously, they're both eradicator targets. That's another good thing. You know, it's 25, 25, 4K. So, um, yeah, eradicator is a pretty strong card in this format. Then, um, uh, that's the monsters. I think it's like 14 monsters. And going on, we have three Necro Valley. You have to have three Necro Valley. Um, this card is great right now. Like, it is. You know, against Prophecy, they can't, or you can lay it over their Grand Tower, and they don't get their Grand Tower effect. They can't use Fate, and they can't, um, and obviously if they don't use Fate, they can't use, um, they can't use Mass, or, what is it, uh, Eternity to get back the stuff that they banished. It's, um, it's overall really, really good. Uh, then Double World Tribute, uh. This card's really good, this format. I just never draw it. I never draw into Royal Tribute when I... Like, opening hand, I never draw into Royal Tribute. And when I do, I don't have a Necro Valley. Uh, but yeah, Royal Tribute's obviously powerful right now. Only one still. I had to cut one down for space. But I honestly feel like, um... Usually, you're... You don't really need a whole bunch of stuff unless... It's, it's, a, really, it's a really good top deck late game. But I mean, it's it's just kind of so-so. Sometimes I side it out, sometimes I don't. Uh, but I do feel like it's needed at at least one. Uh, then you play double pot of duality, obviously. Draw power. And Book of Moon, it's Scrape Keepers. And if you can go, you can, if you can reset your spy and then flip your spy back up, obviously that's um really good play. And obviously they're Book of Moon, they're power cards. If you're playing against windups or whatever, you can book a moon. They're uh, watching doodles and they don't get their effect or whatever. Uh, then um, Darkhold. It's the only one of the Trinity I play. Obviously, um, you play a lot of traps in this deck. 
So you don't really need heavy, and then since you're maxing out on Necker Valleys, you don't need Monster Reborn. Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. That's 10 spells. Um, now onto the traps. Double Eradicator is a meta call of this format. Eradicator is really, really good right now. It's um, it's pretty ridiculous. Like, really? If you can pull it off against spell books, usually they'll auto scoop. Uh, yeah, and then, um, you know, going up against Fire Fist, if you call, it, you, you call spells or traps, it's obviously going to hurt them either way. Eradicator is really good right now. Um, double compulsory. Uh, it's one of the best cards in the format right now. Um, double bottomless. I'm still playing double bottomless. I, I still like double bottomless, but I am playing double D prison. Um, D prison is not the best card right now, but I feel like it works well enough as Drago Sack. To where a lot of people don't read the D prison, they'll attack into it like a Drago Sack, and you can just banish, banish it, and um. Yeah, I feel like attack support's kind of necessary right now. It, um, you know, against more metals, you know, banish the Megalo. Uh, yeah, just dragons, it, it really hurts the Draco Sack. Um, double Mirror Force, obviously. Pretty, that, that, scratch it, this is, if Compulse isn't the best trap in the format right now, Mirror Force is. Um, only one Fiendish Chain. I'm probably going to end up cutting it all together. It hasn't worked very good for me lately. I may cut it for a third compulse, but yeah. Only one Torrential, because since you only play two Recruiter, it doesn't have that many live targets. I mean, you only play 14 monsters. You kind of want to keep your monsters on the board, and you play enough other traps to where you usually don't need to kill your stuff to, um, usually don't need to kill yourself, your stuff to destroy monsters. And then, um, MVP, Dark Bribe, this card, I have Dark Bribe, Rejuvenations, Gateways, Judgment Days, it's amazing right now, um, and it's just another one of those, people don't really read Dark Bribe, but <laughs> this card's amazing, like, I can't stress how good Dark Bribe is right now, uh, and then, Solemn Judgment and Solemn Warning. Obviously, you're playing kind of an anti-meta deck. You need to keep your stuff. Uh, so yeah, now onto the extra deck. It really doesn't no. It really doesn't matter that much as long as you have um, like maybe three Stardust, three Stardust. Obviously, um, I found myself my Malefic Stardust will bounce it, trying to get rid of Necro Valley for the next turn, that they can kill it. But um, you know, usually you can just banish your third one to get out the other one or whatever. So yeah. Um, I'm only playing two Cyber and I don't have a third, but I mean, it doesn't really matter all that much. You just need to have it for the banish. Then for the rank four kind of toolbox thing we got going on Shockmaster, Thunderspark. Uh, this card's actually really good. You guys should t definitely test it out. Um, Crazy Box is an eradicator target. Uh, My Stroke, just a good card. Diamond Dire, one card out to anything. Utopia. Utopia is good. Abyss Dweller, um, playing against Mermails, so want to hit the land. Marigeist, uh, just like floaters and stuff. Uh, it, it's okay right now. I have one, so I just kind of threw it in. Then, um, Butterfly, uh, Space, uh, had it. I mean, then Thanatos, Eagle Swim, Thanatos has, uh, been working really good. Yeah, Draco Sack can't pop it, and it's 2350, so... Yeah, it's pretty good. Now on to the side deck. Um, I've been kind of thinking about it lately. Uh, I think it's pretty solid right now where I stand on it. Um, double Fossil Dyna. Uh, I feel like Fossil Dyna is pretty good right now. Um, obviously, if if dragons don't pop it and they go to try to make a big push, you can kill everything but the Draco Sack if they have a Draco Sack. Or, you know, if you have another card set and you just... If they attack in Fossil Dyna, usually it's devastating, uh, depending on what you're playing, but uh, even like you can normal summon it and just kill all the stuff, but it's, it's really good if you set it, and um, like even usually people won't attack into it because they know that you're playing Spies or whatever, so they'll just they'll just keep it on board and you can just flip it next turn and then just go off. Um, 
double teaking against spell books, obviously, it gives you like a little advantage going turn one. Double deck devy for um kind of rogue stuff. Deck Devi is pretty solid right now though. Uh, uh, you you have a lot more targets with Deck Devi in this. Uh, your assailants become a Deck Devi target. Obviously, all your malefics and your descendant is a malefic target. Um, double macro. You don't really need your stuff that much. Uh, you uh, obviously if you're sitting on a malefic, you can keep the um skill drains out. It wrecks mermails. Um, the third compulse. Uh, uh, double skill drain, obviously, if you need it. I, I haven't cited it in any so far, but, I mean, it's there if you need it. Double MST for back row heavy decks that I don't feel like playing, or trying to get around all the back row with. Then, um, double mind drain for dragons, really. Um, I got a thing, I may take the skill drains out for rivalries or gozens or something like that. Uh, yeah, probably gozen. But, um, yeah, guys, that's the deck. Just, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Make sure, uh, especially about common, let, just let me know what you guys do. If you guys don't like something, um, don't dislike the video. Just comment, and, I, and I'll try to describe to y'all, you know, some stuff. I'll, I'll put up some duels with it if you guys want it. Uh, just feedback is, is a really big thing, so you guys try to get up with me. Uh. So yeah, this is Breaker Way with Oh wait, I guess I'll go over the matchups. I've um I've lost against some rogue stuff with it. Um it's just the deck has a really good meta matchup, but against some of the some of the um some of the lower tier stuff it just it struggles and it's just cause it's it's not opted to play against it, if you guys know what I mean. Um like uh I actually lost a, a Vylon deck. That deck's actually really solid. I didn't know what it did, but um, I guess that probably had part of the impact on it. But um, that um, that deck did like really solid. It uh, beat me. Then I played against Samurai. I've be, I've beaten Tempest Dragoonities with it, but um, Samurai. I took him to game three, but game three he opened up Kagamusha, Kageki, Gateway, and Dojo. So. It was really I couldn't come back from that because he shock mastered me. He um he went Shein shock master and grandmaster with a couple back rows. So, um, obviously I couldn't come back against that. Um, but I've played a couple matches against my friend Josh. His spellbook deck. Uh, I won both matches. I think the second one was two zero and the first one was two one. This deck has a really solid uh, uh, spellbook matchup. I've played a couple dragon players and. The matchup's okay. You just if you can roll tribute them first turn and hit most of their hand, you're you're gonna win uh, that game. Evil swarms. It has a little bit up on the evil swarms, but it's it's not always the best. I haven't played against beetle mermails, but I know that um uh yeah, what's that card? Uh, Ophion gets over. Ophion gets over spy if you have necro valley, so that's that's a pain. But you can um. Maybe go for Descendant and stuff and stuff like that. Even though they play a bajillion black, uh, back row. You have the Dark Bribes kind of protect you. Or whatever. And then you have all the outs. Like, um, they only play two Pandemic. But you have like the Bottomlesses and stuff like that. And the Dark Bribes. The Dark Bribes really help against the matchup. So, um, yeah guys. That's the, um, that's the profile. Oh, uh, this deck has a really bad Mermel matchup. I might as well set that up. I, um... I played against my friend Eric. He won the tournament this last weekend before the lock-in, and um, I played him a couple matches, trying to get comfortable with the deck. Um, we played two matches. He beat me both matches. I took him to game three, both matches. So, yeah, I mean, it's just the the deck uh, just has an automatic advantage against you, you know, playing and stuff. So, and it's it's whatever. I I didn't draw the best. Or I didn't draw a royal tribute any, but. Uh, yeah. Okay, you guys, that's, that's my deck. Uh, just like, comment, subscribe. Leave a bunch of feedback. Uh, yeah, Frankenberry123, signing out.